Morning, everyone. My name is Lynn Ismael, and I'm a home gardener in Southwestern Ontario, Zone 6A. It is October 15th, around 9 ish, 9 o'clock in the morning, and it is pretty windy. I, uh, I want to do a um, garden tour, garden tour, whatever's left of it at this point in the, in the year. But um, I'll, I'll just do a voice over afterwards because I don't, I'm, I don't have the microphone equipped to, he to deal with the wind. So I think it'll be just easier if I just show you what's growing in my garden and then just do a voice over in the end. So yeah, there you go. So here we are at the back of our property where we're starting our tour. And in front of the shed is a dry bed. And this bed were full of daffodils in the spring. And I've also chosen plants that are drought tolerant and rabbit resistant tolerant, such as proboscum and salvias. Those two perennials I've uh, winter sown from last winter. I've also used seeds uh, mix that are called wildflower mix. And some of those mixes came with this calendula. And there are also some yarrows and poppies there as well. And here's another couple of beds that are outside of my fenced-in area. I thought I would plant some peonies on this bed that I'm showing here, but I realized that it's close to the septic bed, and I don't really want it to to break. Yeah. So anyway, I've planted a few of my winter-sown seeds that I forgot about. <laughs> So they were just planted this fall, uh, this October. Uh, earlier you saw lavender and these are veronicastrums and catmint, which is pretty easy to, to grow. And over on this bed is uh, two shrubs, the spice baby viburnums from Proven Winners that I got from Northland Nursery. They, uh, they should have pretty spring flowers and these are two peonies um, I have six peonies here and I believe this one is Carl Rosenfeld Rosenfield and the other three at the back there are Bunker Hills they're all from Northland Nursery and I think they're all bright pink magenta over here is another Spice Baby Viburnum that's been uh, snipped by rabbits and that's why my fists are shaking but anyway, here are my Creme de Cassis Dahlias, so they're very pretty a surprise mystery tuber Dahlias from Moth and Mirth I've been happy from all the tubers I've got from her, they've all been healthy as with this one they look like a Sylvia to me See this bright orange? It just pops and uh, very autumnal. I love mixing it with pinks, with reds, especially with blue. When I still had my ageratums, they really popped. You can see at the bottom there are my um, Honeyworth, some Zinnias, and my Arch. I think this is my Shiloh Noel Dahlia from the Dahlia Expert. It's pretty, but it's not very conducive for flower arranging. It's good for the landscape. I have my scabiosas. They're nice and purple. I like mixing it with peaches, such as this calendula here. I think this is an orange prince. But lots of mixes of calendulas, and I didn't label them. This is my favorite one. It's got yellow. And if you look closely in the center, well, now we can't. <laughs> This one's um, almost pinky orange. I'm not very good at this voiceover, am I? Oh, this is Xenia. It's orange. It's tall. Taller than me. Very pretty. Ooh, and some Gora. Gora. I started those from seeds. And the back is a uh, Benary lilac. And at the back of that are my li limelight. Here's a close-up of my Benary lilacs. 
I enjoy having them in the garden. These are scarlet zinnias from West Coast. They're they're a lot brighter than what you see here in the in the film. Nice accent colors. I see that those in July. Uh, my echo blue, the cianthus that I started from seeds. They're still they're still around. Ooh, and I am trying to overwinter a few sweet williams very sweet williams and I'm using these well well that's like a Canterbury Bells and you can see me eating at the moment and me more weeding there you go oh that's one of my nemesis um, oh and there's a sweet pea that's self-seeded you see me covering the sweet williams in some of the campanulas just to give them more time to establish themselves before the frost comes or before the, the ground freezes but I will have to take them off once the snow comes because otherwise um, it might not work um, more view of the blooms from the garden I don't remember what this is. I've kind of neglected it. And they're petering out, but we still have some blooms. Not as much as July, August. This one's um, my favorite, well, one of my favorites. It's kind of like naming who your favorite child would be. Here you see my Echo Blue Lucianthus. I really like that it's blue and right beside it is a, uh, I forgot what time stop is, I think it's a big, big tour, never mind. Uh, I've got some roses here, Westerland roses, and I have my cup and saucer vine climbing on the, on the chalice instead of the rose for now. It's a uh, frost. It's not frost tolerant, it's from Mexico, so in the next few days when the frost comes, I, uh, I won't see them again. My... What am I showing here? Um, oh, there you go. I have my tall straw flowers that just fall down, but it's still blooming. And the vintage white, which I thought I was gonna like. I, I rarely use it in my arrangements. It's still really nice in the landscape though. And these are Queenie Lime Peach. I think this is my favorite series, favorite one from the Queen Lime series. Some status, white status. Again, I thought I would like more, but I didn't really use it as much. Uh, Zinnia. I don't remember what variety it was and I got some cafe au lait dahlias all protected from those little bugs that want to eat them all American Dawn I think this is one of my I keep saying my favorite my favorites but it's a favorite of mine it keep blooming and blooming and blooming and who doesn't want that labyrinth dahlia I like the coloration of it Hard to arrange, but I'll grow it again. I told my orange snapdragon that was the most snapdragons I had growing in the garden. In here, I'm trying to overwinter some snapdragons, different varieties. I did not label them, I did not learn from my mistakes, but once they bloom, I'll figure out what they are. Hopefully, they survive the winter and they actually <laughs> overwinter. Here are my uh, lemon bones and more snapdragons. And I'm covering them just so they have more time to get established. And underneath on the other end, there you go, are some 
Lark's purse. They're exceeded. They don't look much, but hopefully they'll uh, they'll get established more before before the ground freezes. Cause they're very nice plants. Here we're getting our deck done and our exterior paint changed to blue. I like how the blue, oh, um, you can see it says Bruce there. We'll probably use that as our Christmas tree this year just because it's going to get bigger and it's not going to fit the where they've been planted. But it's kind of sad because I really like it, but it just doesn't fit our landscape right now. I do like the blue from afar and in the fall when the orange and the leaves changes. Anyway, here's a Thunderbolt box honeysuckle that I got from Northland. They should be evergreen and they really like this, um, this area because you can see lots of new growth right there. So I have one, two, I'll see those green growths, new growths. Those are, those are new, so they like this spot. And the third one... Why did I put it in a slow motion? Things to learn from me. I don't really know what I'm doing sometimes. Anywho, besides the box honeysuckle, well it's not a box honeysuckle, it's a thunderbolt honey, honeysuckle. Is um, it's hard to see here, but it's a doitsia, Nico doitsia. They're supposed to have white flowers in the spring, so I'm looking forward to see what that looks like because right now you can barely see them without me labeling what they are. So that's what I have growing on my garden as of October 15th, 2022. I hope you enjoy that little tour. I'm planning on expanding my garden for 2023, so I will take you into that uh, to that journey as well. Um, I'm hoping that in the next few weeks the weather will be nicer and that my uh, my deck will be done, so I can start expanding my garden bed right on the front bed. Um, I didn't really want to be a nuisance when they're trying to fit, when the painters are trying to finish their thing. So anyway, next. until next time.